Eyes down for the other one. Good morning, people. It's Monday. It's just got 11 o'clock. And it's a tractor. But what is this, I hear you ask? This is a Silvercrest, i.e. Lidl's, deep fat fryer. Coated in polymerised oil, which is being ripped off by a bit of waste thinners. Nice. So what's it doing on the bench? The lid, by the way, is over there in another diesel soak to get the polymerised oil off that. What's it doing on the bench? Well, to me, it looks very much like an ultrasonic cleaner. And given the fact that my missus has decided that we're no longer going to eat deep fried food, because she can't bear having the thing in the kitchen anymore, and I don't particularly like deep fried food, so... It's another project, right for conversion, into an ultrasound cleaner. I don't know if this will work. I've just looked at a YouTube video, actually, where a bloke tries and fails to build one. Uh, but I can see why he failed quite easily. Uh, he, used, he used woofers and you need tweeters. But I have, kicking around, various old speaker systems and various bits robbed out of old speaker systems which include, I'm pretty sure, some piezoelectric tweeters which is exactly what you use for producing high frequency the uh, the frequencies that they seem to use between, is between 25 and 40 kilohertz so not that high uh, I'm just looking into that now but I think uh, there's plenty of room underneath this to mount two ultrasound transducers there and there underneath and uh, we'll just call it an experiment and see if it works because this is quite a nice size easily big enough for cleaning carburetor bits etc etc uh, electrical components et al so there's a future project deep fat fryer to ultrasonic cleaner right what we're on with at the moment is this front piece. Now what I've decided to do first is to make up this piece round that corner and round that corner back to that height. So we have a line there which is we know is where the tin fits to. We have a line round there which we know where, is where the tin fits to. So we need to make it all up to that finished height there. So I'm going to measure out and start cutting some tin. I shall weld a piece onto there then I shall weld a piece on the other side to do the same. Right, and then I shall remake these two pieces or make some repair pieces to go in there, I'm not quite sure yet. Right, and get those so that they fit and support those and meet up. Right, and then the dog is beginning to do some rabbit seeing. And this week I think I'm going to produce a decently long video, or maybe even two videos. Right, I'll bring you back when I've got this tin cut, and we'll have a look at tigging it on. Because I'm going to I'm going to use the tig for this. Because I want to use that gas up and get a new bottle on order, and then I shall carry on with MIG. Just using little spots of MIG until my new gas bottle arrives. I can't see any sense in sending gas bottles back with gas in them, so... There you go, that's just me being a mean Yorkshireman. Right, bring you back later. Bye now. And here we go, folks. 12.30. And there's the first piece of tin made. That replaces that edge. And the uh, top panel will fit on top of it and weld to it when I've replaced that bit. But this is recreating the lines of the old panels so we can see what goes where. And the more we fill in, the better it looks. The next bit I'm going to make is for down there. I think that corner there, which I can use. I can use this, which 
fits in there like that. That drops into there and that gives us a positive position all the way around to fit that to. So that's the next piece I'm going to make. But first I'm going to try the top on again and see where this has to go to. I have a feeling that this edge goes up and then tilts back like that and spot welds to the, ed uh, the edge of the cowl there. But I shall find out in a minute. Right, I'll bring you back when I have something more to show you. But that piece, that piece has gone in quite nice. That fits, that fits well. That will all obviously have to be cleaned off spotlessly before I weld it. Right, off we go. Right, folks. Aided by my trusty floodlight, that's the first piece tacked in. So you see, we have built that edge back up, and we've now got something to weld to. We may have to trim this slightly round there. We may not. I don't know. Right, so the next bit to do is to get a piece made for here. Now it wants to come out to here. Right, maybe a bit further. So obviously I'll make it big and then trim it to fit. But it needs to go straight across there. Like that. And then round to there. But it needs to end somewhere here. Underneath the, uh, underneath the top of the cowl. So what I'll do first is I'll cut a piece to go in there. And come out there. That appears to be not welded on very well, or at least it's moved. Never mind, we can maybe do something with that. Right, back to metal cutting. I'll bring you back when I've done it. Bye now. Here we go. The second part is taking shape. Now, I'm not sure where this edge is going to end up yet, but I know it wants to be turned up about like that piece there. Right, so what I'm going to do now, now I've got that fitting in there, I've folded a flange on, can you see that? I've folded a flange on the back there. Right, and just cut the cut some little V's out, not very neatly on that corner. Just to take that up. So what I'm going to do now is take this piece off. Cut that off by there. Right, because this piece is neither now nor so much. I'll take this bracket off. And uh, get all that crap out there. And I'll weld the bracket back onto there. In that position. So I've clearly marked, I've put little cross marks on here so I can get my metal exactly back in the same position when I've taken it off and done it all. Right, another step forward, another step forward, bring you back later. 3.30 and we have a piece that approximates a piece that wasn't there when I bought the tractor but there it is, it fits. Now that will weld and tap and the grill fits perfectly and the top fits perfectly so that's the second piece made so I'm now going to just see if I can clamp that in place whilst I offer the uh, I'm going to say I'll, I'll say it again I'm going to see if I can clamp this in place and uh, without fouling the top so that I can offer the top piece into position and just check that it's a fit on the inside and then it's weldy weldy. Right, I'll bring you back when I've done it. Bye now. Right folks, four o'clock just gone. That piece is fitting okay. And the top fits on and it all goes on together perfectly. So that's now virtually ready for welding. I just have to tap a little bit more clearance into there, but that's virtually ready for welding. Uh, I've put some I went onto eBay and I bought some zinc spray paint. It was sold to me as weld through, which is what I asked for. Weld through, it was advertised as weld through zinc primer. When it's arrived, it just says zinc primer, no mention of it being weld through. So I put some on it and I'm going to test it and see if it's any good. Uh, but that's it for today because I now have to rush off and drive to Hornsey to buy my wife a punch bag. Saves my skin, you see, because uh, I was the punch bag, but now she's going to buy one. OK, see you all tomorrow for more fun and games. I think that fits rather well, don't you? Bye now. Good morning, people. It's Tuesday. And... I whacked some of that grey primer, which advertises itself as weld through, on last night. So 
so I'm ready to weld this piece on. Uh, and of course, the great advantage of making this bit is now I know what I want for this side. So I can just make a piece to match that one and fit that in. And likewise with that piece, I now know what's wanted on this side. Although I cocked that one up a bit, I should have probably put a little dog leg in it and gone right round the corner to pick up that bit as well. But I shall do that on this this side and I shall put a piece in over there. So, it's all going very well. Even though I have run out of TIG gas and uh, I've had to do it with MIG. But you can get neat little spot welds with MIG and then grind them down and it's absolutely fine. Right. I'm going to cut up another piece of metal and I'm going to get on with it. Catch you in a minute. Right folks, I just got broken off there by an overheating Volvo that isn't. So there you go. Right, it fits. That goes on there. That meets up there, that meets up there. That meets up under there. So we're looking good. We're looking good. Of course, I'm going to have to reinforce this edge. I'm going to have to repair this as well. But that's minor. Because all I need to do with this is put a super metal behind it and just weld through it, spot weld through it through the holes and that will be fixed so it's looking good, it's coming I'm just going to put a few more spots on there we're just going to put a few more spots on under there and then we'll move to this side and start on here ok, I'll bring you back when I'm on with it, bye now well I've made another discovery folks this weld through primer isn't weld through primer it's ordinary zinc primer paint and it is in fact an insulator and you can't weld through it so if you see this advertised on eBay as weld through primer don't buy it because it isn't there you go I'm going to report that to eBay that, that stinks right there it is all tacked up and uh, and finished at that side on to the next side bring you back later bye now just a quick one a, an example of Cardboard aided design or CAD. Right, just slide that in, trim it out round the back so that it fits to there, and then we just mark the curve on it badly, <laughs> and uh, we've got it. So I can cut that out roughly to that size now, and then cut a piece of tin to match it, and jobs are good. Un. Right, onward. It's cup of tea and lunchtime, 1 50, nearly 2 o'clock. Right, there's that piece in, and as usual, I make a better piece, better job of the second piece than I do the first piece. But who cares, because at the end of the day, it's all out of sight anyway, it's all behind the outer cover. So that's that piece in and fitted, and got the bends in there. And that's that piece drawn up to the, uh, drawn up to the grill, so that we know we need just a little piece around there. And... Uh, Next job, I think, before I weld anything, I'll leave that clamped in place. Very often does pay to make all your bits of tin first and clamp them in. You need loads of pairs of little mole grips and these obstruction mole grips. and They're so useful. Right, clamp them all in place. And then when, you've got, when you're happy with it all, tack the first piece in, check the fit, tack the next piece in, check the fit, and keep going like that. Right, so, the next piece I'm going to make is that. But first, it's dinner time. I'll bring you back later. Bye now. And there we are, people. Just come three o'clock. And the second piece is made and fitted. It gets easier. When you get to do these things, the second bit you make is always better than the first bit. Never mind. Right, I'm going to make some marks on there, where that fits. And then I'm going to take that off. Clean that up. <clears throat> and put it all back on and cut that off to there like we did with the other one right that's looking better already isn't it that's looking better already ok bring you back in a minute and there we go folks it's a fit quarter to four and we're ready to start welding so I'm going to tack this up and then we'll check the fit of the uh, the top cowl and then we'll weld it so there you go good eh it looks better than it did it's beginning 
it's beginning to take shape as you can probably see if you hadn't got the light in your eyes that better it's beginning to take shape right I might have too much flange on there but I can soon take some off that's about right that's about the size of the original flange but no matter right onward and there we go folks 418 that's tacked in place that's all tacked in place this is well sides welded in fact it's more or less welded I just need to put a bit more weld on there and we are back to right we are beginning to build back what has rotted away since 1955 there we go right well that's about it for today I've passed the Rubicon for welding now so I'm just going to have a tidy up and a sort out and then I shall be away for my tea so I'll see you all tomorrow bye now chaps till Tuesday there you go there's the two pup rivets which are our guides lined up again we can see those anymore can we oh yes we can that's there look there's two pup rivets there as well which shows us we're not far out this is I've actually just thrown this this nose cone on the floor uh, not in temper I was I was trying to panel beat a bit and it fell out, out off the top and crashed to the floor so that's got a bit bent but that's neither here nor there but you can see or at least I hope you can see that we're actually beginning to build back what's missing and of course these th these complex curves are going to be the uh, the sort of more difficult bit to get this shape around there nicely this this does run out to nothing but I think we can do it I've ordered my uh, sand cushion from my brother so that I, I'll have a sand cushion to bash some metal on and I'll have to get some thin clean sheet steel to do for that you can't use painted stuff for jobs like that but that's looking pretty good that's I mean that by comparison is so easy <laughs> there we go right that is the last the last for Tuesday so I'll see you all tomorrow bye now good morning people Wednesday and we're back on with the CAD the cardboard aided design so what we're working out here I shall be leaving this piece on, of course, because that's our location and this piece isn't rotten. We'll be making a piece to fit something like that. Right? But I'm wondering whether I might be better off repairing this piece first. And making a piece to go around there. This is this is difficult. This is a difficult repair on several curves, but the curves I must admit are not as bad as I thought they might be. I think we're going to be able to do this a lot easier. But I think I might repair this piece. But if you can see, let me just get. You can see this line here. That line is a, a press line that gradually fades out down there. So so by here it would have disappeared and that corner comes on there so I think what I'll do is I'll have a go at making a whole piece first to come to somewhere like that but probably fit on the inside and then I might just uh, cut this out and weld those edges on, leave that edge on because that edge is good, leave that edge on and fill it weld that into there and then grind it smooth and fill it right so we're cracking up at the end of, I'm sort of I've just had to tidy up and lit the heater because although it's sunny outside it's cold in here right so that's where we left it yesterday with the two tops in and, whoops and the two sides in and uh, it's beginning to take shape right I'll bring you back when I've cut some tin never mind cutting cardboard I'm going to cut some tin catch you later right folks there it is it's beginning, he said, throwing it on the floor, it's beginning to fit. It's beginning to fit. 
in there like that. If it stops turning around, and I'll push it in place. You can see, you can see there how it's going to fit. It's going to need a lot more bashing uh, and and careful bending and stretching. I think what I might do next is just uh, heat it up and and soften it a little bit, just to take the rigidity out of it. Just uh, anneal it. But that is beginning to come together. There's no point in me showing you how I do this because there are so many people on the internet who do this sort of metal fitting who are so much better than me right I mean I've had experiences in this workshop where I've picked up a pair of tin snips and looked at a sheet of metal and the sheet of metal has run screaming out the door you know never to be seen again that's the sort of thing that happens here when I pick up a pair of tin snips the sheet of metal has an accident never mind I'll get there I shall warm this up soften it and keep tapping and keep bending and I might just see after I've softened it if I can use this parent metal itself as a former to get that curve more even but as you can see that is beginning to go in, that is beginning to fit. So it's not as difficult, it's not as difficult as it looked. These jobs never are. It's the fear of it's the fear of beginning that stops people doing these things. Don't wonder how to do it, get started and wonder how you did it. That's the best way. Right, I'm gonna have a cup of tea and something to eat. I'll bring you back in a bit. Bye. And there we go folks. 3 o'clock and I'm just putting some little tacks on it to hold it in place I'll probably put another one there even though I might take that off might take that off yeah. Yeah. we'll see I'm putting some tacks on it, hold it in place just to hold it in place and I'm going to offer it up and see if we've got anything like a fit around this edge and around there and then we'll carry on from there so I'll just finish this off and I'll bring you back when I've got it assembled onto the uh, onto the rest of the cowl and see how we're fitting. Okay, there we are folks. For a first trial fit, I don't think that's bad. We need to heat this now and uh, just soften it and let it squeeze into there. And uh, put some more curve into it, but basically it's fitting. It's going to fit. I can make it look right. Okay, so I'm going to carry on with that. I've got that welder set just spot on now. Uh, it's welding much better and it's very important when you're working with thin tin like this and you want little tiny tack welds that you get your welder set up absolutely spot on so that when you pull the trigger you get an instant smooth weld. Then you can just grind them off and they disappear. Okay, bring you back in a bit. Bye now. And there she is, folks. That's in. The grill's in. That fits. With a weld tap, weld tap, weld tap, that can be... That pushes into there, that's fine. Right. All the lines are fine. This one's welding, that one's taking off. This one's welding around now. Carefully tack, tack, tack all the way around, and then we'll get the rest of it with filler. I shall weld that round because this panel actually comes up to here. Well, it actually comes up to there. So I've plenty to weld there, so I can weld this away and then grind it out. Then I'll put a strip in there and weld through from this side so that we can lose all those holes and then grind it back. But this is looking yeah, they're about, that just wants to be about there and twisted up a bit at the front which makes sense, yes so that's our alignment there so, that's going quite well going quite well, I'm quite pleased with that because this is not an easy job these are awkward bits now if you were Trev if any of you watched Trev's blog, which is bloody brilliant uh, and watched Trev do it 
Trev fits tin like you wouldn't believe. But he's been doing it for a long, long time. He's far more experienced than me. I'm just crap. Right, okay. Catch you later. Right, I've made a decision. I'm leaving that as it is for now. I'm going to go around to this side and do the same on this side. And then I can fit the cowl at both sides, get it in the right position for height wise, get it in the right position for the grills to fit. And then I can think about putting it on. But until I've got this corner sorted as well, I don't know my exact position. So I'm now going to make a piece for there and fit it and I'll repair these afterwards. They're simple. Right, onward. And there's another way to look at it. Fit it to here first and then fit it to the top. Isn't it amazing that the first one takes four hours to fit and the second one goes on in 20 minutes. And the problem is of course you make a far better job of the second one than you do of the first one and then you want to take the first one off and make another one. Let me tell you from bitter experience that is a mistake. Right, there we go. All I have to do now is to get the curve that way to go into the dome of the top uh, and fit it. And fit it and weld it. Or at least tack it and then make sure it fits okay. So, I'm pleased with that. It's 20 past four, four on Wednesday. So, the day will soon be over. So I better crack on. Right, I'll, if I get any more done today, I'll bring you back. Bye now. Well, that's it, folks. The fire's almost out. It's quarter to five. And it fits. I need to take a little bit off there, just to match the curve up. And, of course, at this side, because the rock comes a lot further round, we're going to have to build that piece up with a little piece of tin that fits underneath there and fades away into nothing and carefully weld it in place. But, I think you will agree that we're beginning, let me just put you some, let me just put you some extra light on there. I think you'll agree we're beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel. The lace work is not so much lace work anymore. Amazing how an angle grinder makes a good welder out of everybody. There you are. If my mates on welding forum see this, I'll get blackballed. Right, that's it folks, it's packing up time. I'll see you all tomorrow for Thursday's fun and games. Bye now. Good morning people, it's Thursday. And the question is, can you have enough pairs of mole grip clamps? And the answer is no, you can't. So that's fitting now, that's looking good. But on this side, the rock was more extensive. And so I'm working on making up a piece to go in there to reproduce that curve at that side. Well, I'm actually going to uh, I'm actually going to reduce that a lot because it needs to go further back to the metal because it doesn't stick out anywhere near as that that much. But as you can see, it more or less fades away to nothing by there. So what I shall do is build this up with weld and then finish it with filler. I'm going to weld through all this so that it's solid metal. But it's coming along quite well. It's coming along quite well. I knew this was going to be a tedious job, and I was right. But, a little bit at a time, a little tap here and there, a little squeeze with the mole grips, and suddenly it's shapelier. Right, I'll bring you back when there's something interesting to show you, if indeed you can call this job interesting. Bye now. There we are, folks. It's tacked up. It's not pretty. It's a bit of filler. And a lot of grinding will make it nice. Right. I'll just turn the welder off because you probably can't hear for the welder. That's better. Just the fan blowing the lovely warm air around the workshop now. Right. So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to beat the inner piece out to meet this piece here. Right. So that that's a nice smooth curve. 
and let's attack the rest of it. And then it'll be grindy, grindy and filly, filly, but not yet. Not till I've welded it all up together. Right, onward. But first, a cup of tea and some lunch, I think. Just put two strips in there now to fill the gap and... Well, one's probably one strip, actually. No, no, probably two welded in the middle. And we're done. Oh, hang on, no, I have a hole to do there, haven't I? I've got that hole to do. Right, onward to lunch and a cup of tea. Gentlemen, I give you Frankenstein's carol. Still lining up with the two spot welts. And I think we've about got it. I can make a job of that. That looks alright. That's going to look alright with a bit of gobble on it. Oh well, did I put strips of metal behind here? Put an inch wide strip behind there and then welded through until all the rust has, well all the all the pitted thin metal has dissolved into the weld and you weld right through onto the uh, onto the strip. I've done that both sides. I have that bit to neaten up a bit. But this I can make something of. And it still fits, it still fits to those two. If you just stretch it like, like that a bit. It still fits to me two index marks. Right. I have a bit of tapping to do. A bit of rounding out to do there, I think. But, basically, she's done. And I don't think that's bad. You could say I 3D printed it with well. You can't see under there, can you? Just a minute, I'll, I'll turn it round. Let me turn it round. It's a bit like one of those back lots at MGM. It looks good from the front, but inside the back. Now there's the two strips that I've welded through onto. There's the corner repair panels. I mean, I've got some more tacks to put on here and some neatening up to do. But basically, you can see the new bits I've put in. And on the outside, it doesn't have to look anything in there because what that's going to get is red lead, stone chip and then it's going to get a good soaking in wax oil so that it isn't going to rot again for a long, long time. Right, that is by far the hardest part of all the welding done. The rest is comparatively straight and easy. Great stuff. Okay, well... That's Thursday over, folks. So, look at my heater. It's at 65, it was 72 degrees later, uh, earlier on, but I'm letting it go out now because it's uh, it's almost time to go home. Still, still 64 degrees. It's been lovely and warm in the workshop today and it's been bloody cold outside. Right, I'm gonna love you and leave you with a last look, with a last look at Frankenstein's, Frankenstein's bonnet. Well, it's front cowl really, but no man. I looked at by, you, people will be screaming, you can buy a new one for 250 quid. Well, you can, but by the time you put VAT and delivery on it, it's nearer 350 quid. In fact, I think it's getting on for 400. So, not wishing to spend money on things like this, which can be repaired. And anyway, as you can see from the welding, I need the practice. So, I've repaired it. There we go. Right, see you all tomorrow. Bye now. And there we go, folks. It's still thirsty. But I think we'll agree that that doesn't look half bad. I've forgotten to do that little bit at the side where the light goes, but never mind. Oh, I want to, I want to finish welding that on as well, because I never did really. And pe patch that bit at the side. But they're jobs for tomorrow, <clears throat> and I think that they're jobs for tomorrow. After a bit of a tidy up, because we've uh, 
We've attained rag shop status in here. It's a right mess. This light's bloody useful. If you see one of these in Lidl's people, grab one. Fantastic welding light. You can position it anywhere you want. You can get loads more light on the job. If, like me, you're a bit uh, hard of eyesight. Right, there she is. Right, that's it. Nearly five o'clock. I'm going home. But I think you'll agree. That's come out a lot better than I expected. Although, probably. Does that... Oh, look at that. That goes to... That goes to there like that, doesn't it? That's it. Look at that. There we are. She's lined up. She's lined up. Nice one! Right, I'll stop bragging about it now I'm going. Bye bye now. See you tomorrow. Good morning folks. And a beautiful morning it is. High pressure predominates. It's very warm and sunny. I've got the workshop doors open. And there's no need to light the heater today. Right. There's our finished cowl top. And I'm just repairing this piece at the side here. I'm going to put a fold in that so that it folds to that edge. Right, and then I'm going to fit that piece behind there, put the other piece of tin back, and then drill the hole. Make the hole. And there we go. And then I'll just fold that back down there and put a tack on it as well, I think. And that's the job done. Right. I've had a bit of a tussle with the people that sold me this grey primer. I'm sticking to my guns, it's not well true. Right? It doesn't say well true on the can, but Autotech is made by JBL Paints. And on JBL Paints uh, material sheet for this paint, it does say suitable for weld through right now a paint that's suitable for weld through this has got a short term uh, temperature resistance of 500 degrees right so it's uh, it it'll stand quite a lot of heat but a true weld through primer is rich in either copper or aluminium which means it's conductive and when the rod or the wire from the MIG hits it it conducts straight through to the underneath and the arc starts when the wire hits this nothing it's insulated right so whilst it may be suitable for weld through I don't think it's true weld through I mean I've not I'm not, I'm not causing trouble for the seller because the seller's gone by the data sheet and uh, the data sheet does say suitable for weld through but I think they've been a bit uh, a bit economical with the truth shall we say that needs cleaning up to finish doesn't it I haven't finished that properly yet right and some of these went ticking down a bit as well although I don't suppose it really matters there Oh, that's great, isn't it? This is when the welder wasn't welding properly. Right, we'll take those two welds off and we'll we'll just break them off because they're not stuck to anything and we'll re-weld that. That one's all right, but that one, right, but that's pathetic, isn't it? I mean, you can tell because they look crap, though, so they? they really look crap. Right, onward. I'll bring you back when I've done it. What I'm going to do, I've decided what I'm going to do, when I start on the mud guards next week, because these are big and open areas, I'm going to lay these out and I'll show you the whole process of measuring, cutting the patch, uh, welding it in place and, and finishing it off. Right, it's, it's fairly straightforward. The, the things we have to make sure that we do is pick up the holes pick up the fixing holes in the right places it applies on both see this is three see there's a wire hole then there's one two three fixing holes well they've got to stay in the same place 
so we've got to re-drill those in the right place. Uh, and also, these have to, uh, they actually wrap, you see that piece at the bottom there, that actually wraps around like that and goes underneath the, uh, goes underneath the bracket, I touched the button again, goes underneath the bracket where the, uh, that bolts onto there. So I'll show you all that next week. That was the piece that was missing, I found it in the trailer. I'll show you all that next week. Right, I'm going to crack on with this and I'll bring you back when it's done. Okay, bye now. Right folks, 20 past 2. That's all finished and in grey primer. Grey primed underneath there with this with the zinc paint that isn't well too. And uh, we're ready to put those two back together. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do it. I can pop holes round the outside, I think that's probably what I'll do, is pop pop holes round the outside piece with a hole punch and then just do some spot weld. I should clean off this paint and just squeeze it together and do some spot welds. And I think that's overall it's going to be the best way. But there will be places, there's places here where I can actually get inside and just tack it on this lip. But there you go, that's that finished. And I've finished the first footboard. The patch under there, a few little rust holes welded up. That's our first footboard done. And I'm going to now get on with the. Uh, the next one, which is slightly worse, it's a bit more perforated, but what I'm going to do with that is put a strip right across it. That one's welding up, that needs a piece in there. I'll probably put a strip inside there as well and just curl it round onto there and, and reinforce that piece on the inside as well and I can weld that up. That's what I'll do. These are simple. These repairs are really simple. But there we go, that's that one done. Another piece done. Right, I'm going to crack on with this and I'll bring you back in a minute. Bye now. Right folks, once again the party's over. Both footboards are done, or footrests or whatever you want to call them. I've just given them the first coat of red lead. So they'll be dry by Monday. And I can assemble footboards onto brackets. And then I can assemble footboards and brackets onto tractor. There. And that will give me the position of the, can you see those, three holes down there. Which is where, now you can see them on that one can't you. Which is where the mudguard bolts to. Right because we need to be able to line up the mudguard uh, we've got the three holes down there on that one we've got most of them on there but I can make a plate from that one and weld it onto there because they do go right to the bottom so we haven't lost any metal there you can see there's a hole there, you can see there's a part of a hole there and part of a hole there so we can see where they go so once we've got that done we can assemble the mud guards onto the foot plates and we can see, we can then line up this point here doesn't matter if it's the wrong bracket at the moment but that goes that goes there like that and the mud guard comes down there and then goes underneath it and has two holes in it and then the box sections for the mud guards come down like that. I mean, obviously these are too short because they've rotted away, but they come down and land on there like that and weld to there. So I'll probably have so much to put in on either side. Oh yes, hang on, yes, they go like that. So there's a so there's a shaped piece. There's an angled shaped piece missing. So they go something like that to support the mudguard so obviously I'm going to have to make up some box section but that's a real easy piece to make up that isn't a problem at all so oh this is finished 
this is finished. I've done a few more tack welds just to stiffen up this bit which has made an amazing difference. I've shot the grey primer in there, the, the grey zinc primer. And uh, I have to weld that back together yet. I haven't quite decided how I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to end up uh, punching some holes in it all the way around where the spot welds were and then spot welding that bit and grinding it up and then I shall just tack it all the way down here to hold it onto the front right? and then I may have some little bits of neatening up to do when it's all back together but I've done that that's that done so what we have left is this piece to weld back on to there like that after it's been lined up this just wants this part of the bonnet just wants a couple of tacks on it where it's come loose down there and uh, just a bit of just a bit of over welding to reinforce it a little bit and then that's the bonnet done and really the last bits to do, well, I should be starting on Monday on the mud guards because there's, uh, there's quite a lot of welding on the mud guards, but it's all straightforward. So, I think the first job on Monday might be to have a tidy up because the bench is pretty trashed. The welding shop's not so bad, I didn't tidy that up this morning, but uh, we're all shut down in here now. So there's, uh, I always like to quit, quit welding at least 30 minutes before I leave the building. Usually, sometimes an hour, but at least 30 minutes. That's off. That's not off. That's off. Yeah. Right. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for subscribing. More subscribers this week. Welcome aboard, chaps. And I'll see you all on Monday bright and early it's about 11 o'clock <laughs> for more fun and games oh I've got that to weld as well I've got that to weld but that is a just a fancy bit of plate to make with lots of slots in it okay bye folks see you next week <laughs>